Well, my friend, that is what is overwhelming about opportunity. You used to teach, you still do, I'm sure. I know you do. That it's the hinges of God. Absolutely. That he puts, he places the hinge moments that open doorways, that bridge gaps, yeah. that allow us to uh, do more together than we could ever dream of doing Absolutely. apart. And, and faith is tangible. And that story of Jesus, one of the most amazing things of the woman with the issue of blood is that word became flesh. God did not come as a theory to us. He came and wrapped himself in Hallelujah. human flesh and dwelled among us. So for the first time, what was unholy could touch the holy and be changed. And she reached out and touched the fringe, the, the tip, the, the hem of his garments, which many theologians believe it was the it was his prayer shawl, the tzitzis. It was it was them touching the very representation of not only the prayer of Jesus, but the prayers of those that have gone before who were waiting for Messiah. And she tangibly, because our faith is a tangible faith. We, If it's just knowledge, then that, that shapes our perception of God. But when it comes from understanding and encounter, that's our persuasion of God. Now we know he, t I touched him, but it wasn't, he was, he touched me yeah. and he made me whole. And it's that tangible touch of faith and you and Chrissy with your obedience, you became a tangible moment yeah. of faith for all of us yeah. that we could from America, we could from Jacksonville at that time and Huntsville here, you became a conduit of faith that we could touch Moldova. I, I can't go to Moldova and live in Moldova, but yet by faith through a tangible conduit yeah. of orphans hands going into a nation and watching, watching lives change for eternity. Something. And then the fruit of that, the reciprocation of that, it's amazing because you just said it. After they heard about her touching the hem of his garment, they lined the streets and said, if she did it, <laughs> that's all I have to do. I don't have to get his attention in any way. If I can the, just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be home. And the key is people watching the demonstration of that. It's yes. like the new concept. I, I always, I always, when I watch television and there's a new show come on and you think who on earth sat down at a typewriter or a computer these days and came up with a concept to put together all yeah. these different characters that, that, that flesh out into characters that are funny or are sad or are tragic. And it's never been seen by anyone else before. And what God's looking for in, in, in maybe you're watching today and you're a pastor of a church, what God's looking for is someone to push through the crowd there's always a crowd. There's always something in your way. There's always something that will judge you. If they had found that woman before she got to Jesus, some would have said, hey, I know who you are. You're unclean. You can't be here. Get home. So one of the things, is she was thinking the border of his garment because she was getting as low to the ground as she could so no one can see her. A bunch of folk bumped up against Jesus that day. The church is full of folk that bump up against Jesus. But it's well, only you, you the, the few that touch him. Yes. Really touch him. Well, you've got everything that represented of the of the church and faith and doubt. <laughs> you know, yeah. you think who was who was in the crowd? You know, Jesus said, Who touched me? And I can see Simon Peter standing there. You know, you tell me who touched you, I'll take him out right now. You sure. know, then <laughs> we got Judah. You know, uh, you know, you better check your wallet, you know, sure. Lord, you better, you know, there was always that materialistic. You had Thomas mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I doubt anyone touched you, Lord, but yet, That's no, right. someone, someone touched him by faith. Yeah. In, it, oh, in it, the power of God and the faith of God, it, it, the yeah. faith is what brings us in to releasing the power of God in our life. It's and amazing. the thing is, the power was resident in Jesus. <laughs> yes. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't the blockage for the conduit of the miracle. It was the people that were so busy 
posturing it. Uh, if I can get next to him and walk beside him and folk can see me beside him and, and everyone else doing their own thing. And this woman's saying, no, 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 you, you don't understand. You can fight over position all you want. I'll, I'll be on my belly if needs be. But if I can touch, and I wonder how many other hymns she touched. Is that him? No, that's not it. But the Bible says she knew in herself the moment she touched the hem of his garment, a divine impetus was put there by the presence of God. And she suddenly knew, and Jesus knew, somebody touched me. And I, I just encourage folk watching today, Rusty, that are sitting in your, in your circumstance, and you, you've got an issue. You have an issue of fear, an issue of torment, an issue of doubt. You don't sleep well at night. And the devil's there as the accuser of the brethren and continually just to, to, to wear you down. Listen to me. Keep pressing through the crowd. Yep. Their interest in Jesus is casual. You are here because of life and death. And God sent you to watch us today to let you know that Jesus is walking by. This woman, when she heard of Jesus, she knew something in the way this person that described Jesus to her, something in her said, that's my answer. And I believe with all my heart that you're watching today and God has arranged us. I never, when I sat next to Rusty in that airport, I had no idea that I was finding a friend for life and a partner that has been such an encouragement to us over the many, many years. So God is working things out. I was thinking, as you talked about the hinge, if you look at a hinge in a door, that's about the most boring thing you could ever <laughs> be was a hinge. Yeah. That's it. Where are you going? Nowhere. I'm just hanging around here. I'm just opening to closing this door. But what you're doing is you are, you are making access for people to get into the divine. And I'm quite happy to be a hinge for the kingdom of God. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, it's, it's that those hinge moments yeah. that the kingdom functions. Absolutely. And where, where God puts relationships together. He, it, it, it's, our, it's our mission, it's our assignment. He never said, do this alone. These have been some of the most alone times this yeah. past year where people have felt isolated. And Absolutely. you said a while ago, what's going on in Moldova and the lockdown and the hopelessness where uh, it, it, it already uh, brings such hopelessness in, uh, in, that, in that nation, but yet to be locked down, to be, not be able to, uh, we've watched family members not be able to get to family members and watch people die alone, suffer alone, uh, but in, in knowing that, that in Christ alone, he knew the loneliness. Sure. He knew what it was to, to be alone. He was moved and touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And he comes in these moments, he hinges us together. Absolutely. And uh, because the church was made to be together, we, we were made to come together, to grow together, to serve together. And because that is, that's the representation, even when he sent out the disciples, he sent them out two by two. And thank you, Philip, for being that hinge. Because now there are churches all around the world that are able to connect. They're able to walk through a doorway and fulfill an assignment of caring for girls and boys that uh, had been forgotten.